In recent videos, I talked about the largest mountain range on modern Earth and the largest mountain range in Earth's history. So I figured we may as well keep expanding, and that brings us to today's video. What is the largest mountain range in the solar system? Although Earth is, to our knowledge, unique in our solar system in that it has active plate tectonics, this doesn't mean that other planets, moons, and even asteroids can't have mountains, because tectonics can exist without plates. So just to start with a brief recap of what we covered in the previous videos, the largest mountains on Earth by height are the Himalayas, and the longest are the mid-ocean ridges, like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. But when we leave Earth's atmosphere, things get a little weird. Gravity is lower, crusts are made of different material, and mountain building can go to the extreme. Let's start with our neighbor, Mars. The red planet is home to Olympus Mons, the tallest known mountain in the solar system. Olympus Mons is a giant shield volcano standing at about 22 kilometers in height, nearly three times taller than Everest, and around 600 kilometers across roughly the size of Arizona, and it formed from the buildup of repeated lava flows over hundreds of millions of years. The volcanism that formed this impressive shield volcano was likely driven by something akin to hotspot volcanism on Earth. Only unlike on Earth, where plate tectonics shifts volcanoes off their hotspots building chains like Hawaii, Mars does not have plate tectonics, so Olympus Mons just keeps piling lava in one place, getting taller and wider than anything Earth could manage to do. But surprisingly, this isn't the only mountain in the solar system standing at this impressive height. There's actually an asteroid called Vesta with an impact basin that has a center peak rising around 22 kilometers high. This impact basin formed due to a collision with another massive asteroid about a billion years ago. And the height of this peak on Vesta is, in my opinion, even more impressive than Olympus Mons on Mars, because this asteroid is only about 500 kilometers across itself. For context, imagine a mountain nearly as tall as Olympus Mons crammed onto something the size of Colorado. Okay, so these mountains are pretty impressive with regards to height, but what about length? Well, the longest mountain range in our solar system is still Earth's mid-ocean ridge system. Whether you count the entire system of ridges or just a segment like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. However, there are some honorable mentions elsewhere in our solar system. One example is Saturn's moon Iapetus. This tiny walnut-shaped moon has a ridge running almost all the way around its equator, stretching around 1,300 kilometers in length, so about the distance from New York to Miami, and it's up to 20 kilometers in height in some places. So this one is impressive both in length and height. And another really cool thing about this range is that we still don't know exactly how it formed. It might be the frozen remnant of a collapsed ring system, the surface buckling as the moon cooled, or a remnant of the more smushed shape Iapetus used to be when it rotated faster than it does today. Some other honorable mentions include Maxwell Montes on Venus, which is about 11 kilometers tall, the highest peak on Venus, and likely formed by continent-like crustal compression. Side note, there's a lot of really cool tectonics on Venus. I've been meaning to make a Venus tectonics video, so if you want me to do that, I could do that in the future. Comment down below. I'd probably have to have a Venus tectonics expert on as I am not one of those, but it sounds like there's a lot of cool stuff going on on Venus that could give us a lot of great information. So maybe in the future, comment down below if you'd like to see that. Next honorable mention is Ithaca Chasma on Tethys, another moon of Saturn, which is a valley or rift system about 2,000 kilometers long with cliff walls like a planetary version of the Grand Canyon, only it's three to five kilometers deep instead of just the measly 1.8 kilometers like the Grand Canyon. And it's up to a hundred kilometers wide in some areas. While we may still be able to do the rim to rim hike at the Grand Canyon, I don't think we could do it at, at this canyon. No, don't, don't try that. <laughs> Let alone the air itself would be probably hard to breathe. <laughs> And our third honorable mention are features like cryovolcanic domes on icy moons like Enceladus and Europa. This isn't one feature per se, but these are low, broad ice mountains built by frozen water and ammonia instead of rock lava that we're used to. These are secretly my favorite moons, these icy worlds with subsurface liquid water oceans, and their cryovolcanism is just like an extra perk on top of all the other reasons they're cool, and I have 
tons of other videos about Europa and Enceladus, so I'll link some down below if you're interested in learning more. Each of these ranges reflects the weird and wonderful geology of their specific world. And studying these mountains is super important for us because it tells us why some planets have plate tectonics and others don't, how impacts shape small worlds, how icy moons evolve differently from rocky planets, and even what planets or moons may have life, or at least habitability. And if you want to dive deeper into the science, math, and data behind the laws of gravity, planetary geology, and tectonics that build these mountains, check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing interactive platform that allows you to play with data, solve problems, and gain points as you go. Whether you want to understand how gravity allows Olympus Mons to stand so tall, or how rotational forces might have built Ipedis's ridge, Brilliant is the the place to do it. And it's not just math and physics, they have so many other courses. One of my favorites is scientific thinking. This course has really improved the way that I tackle problems and analyze data, and I love that it gives me feedback when I guess the wrong answer too. This is just such an overall beneficial platform, no matter what stage you are at within your education or career. I learn new things on Brilliant every day. So to learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash geogirl, scan the QR code on the screen screen, or click the link down below in the description box or pinned comment. And because you guys are GeoGirl viewers, you can also get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which will provide you full access to everything Brilliant has to offer. So be sure to click that link below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!